Today we're going to put a new cartridge in a Price Fister shower control valve. And to remove the handle, you need an eighth inch Allen wrench. There is an Allen uh, set screw on the back side of the handle. You just unscrew that and it pulls straight out. Then you see there's a chrome ring in the center. You unscrew that and that will let you take the cover plate off. Then there are four screws in each of the corners, one in each corner. There you see the old valve and the old, uh, the old control, and that is the old cartridge there. And the new cartridge is uh, different looking. This is a two-piece set, and the new cartridge is a one-piece set. You'll see in a second. I'm just putting the old one, old cartridge in, and the valve control on just to show you how the old one went together. So now we're going to take this back out and I'm going to shove the new control valve in. You see it's got the new o-rings in the back and it has a single piece plastic unit so it's a single piece not a two piece valve anymore. The problem is is that now it's one big long unit and it won't quite clear the tile. So we're going to get some channel locks and snap the tile. And that's very easy. You just adjust your channel lock to snugly go onto the tile and then snap it. And uh, we just had to take two pieces away, one bigger, one littler. And now the cartridge slips right on in there. So there are four screw holes that we need to line up with. Uh, there's also an O-ring on the back side of that that seats into the brass valve body. You want to make sure you get that in there. Then we're going to grab, there's a stainless steel collar ring that fits over the plastic there with four stainless steel screws. And we're going to reach for that here in a second and put that on. There it is. We're going to grab the four screws that go with it. And so you see how that is. And we're going to put uh, hand tighten the screws down. And then we're not going to tighten each screw tight as uh, we go. We're going to snug them down. And then we're going to go in a crisscross back and forth to uh, slowly tighten it in nice and flat so that we don't uh, damage the O-ring that's uh, going to seal the valve to the valve body. So uh, you see I'm just screwing those in there. You see there's also uh, uh, three other screws. You see one on the left side of the valve there. And those are just for different types of cover plates. And uh, the cover plate we're going to use, oh, and, uh, just so you know, you need to save that brass piece in the uh, center of the nozzle there. And you need that to... Um, uh, fasten the handle to. Okay, so now we're just uh, tightening down the screws here with the screwdriver. But, uh, um, so yeah, we will uh, in a minute be getting a safety razor that is in a safety razor holder, something you can get at the paint department in your local hardware store. And we're going to scrape, uh, razor blades, scrape all the caulk off of the tiles there and clean them up. And then when we put the uh, cover plates back on, we're going to put them on with clear silicone caulk. And uh, we're just going to be very careful and keep it as clean as possible. Uh, keep plenty of paper towels on hand for wiping and wiping and wiping. Okay, and uh, you want to make sure that you get the silicone all around it except for the bottom two inches. And the reason for that is if water does somehow get behind the cover plate, you want it to be able to drain out. So by not putting caulk down at the bottom, it gives the any water that might get in there a chance to get away. Okay, so there you see that metal piece there again, and that is what the uh, the tip there, that is what the handle for the faucet screws onto. So you see there is the razor blade in the holder that I'm 
cleaning the caulk off with and just going to clean it off and so there I'm explaining with my hand we caulk around but we leave that area uncaulked and same with the uh, tub spout below uh, the tub spout actually does not have any metal in that bottom so uh, now this here is the stopper we have to uh, take uh, the stopper out from the tub spout this is a rebuild kit and uh, basically the only thing you want from that kit is the uh, washer because the new stopper does not line up with the hole in the existing shower control valve and it will spray water out and not seal so you have to use the original stopper and put the new washer in the stopper and then it will work just fine so that is uh, the finished job there we've got everything is all uh, caulked in, sealed up, screwed together, and you'll see I pull up on that and the water stops and it continues to seal up even more as the pressure builds when the water goes up to the shower. Another thing is you see that uh, tub is all messed up in there from putting shower uh, anti-slip uh, pads in there and uh, those things always rot out your tub. That can be fixed though with a tub refinisher. Uh, you just need to schedule it. They'll come out, sand it, refinish it. A couple hundred bucks, done. And of course it's always cute to end a video with a picture of Archie and Poppy. So I would like to say thank you for watching the video. I hope you found it interesting and helpful to learn how to do a little bit of plumbing. And I will see you on the next video. Leave any questions and comments you might have. And don't forget to give a like or even subscribe. Thank you. And there we go. <clears throat> Got the glaze on there. Poppy, get down. I have the glaze on there and the glaze is made from it's a cup of ketchup uh, Heinz organic and then I have a couple of tablespoons of honey and a teaspoon of cumin and then about six uh, jiggers of Tabasco regular Tabasco and uh, then just stir it all together and brush it over the meatloaf and then I put it back in the oven for another 20 minutes to um, make it uh, dry out a bit glaze up and come on you don't belong up here Poppy uh, so anyway um, it's about two hours total oven time now and uh, just gonna let it rest here for a couple of minutes thanks Poppy let it rest here for a couple of minutes, and um, then I figured I would put some of the glaze on the chicken, too. So anyway, yeah, this is looking really, really yummy. I'm looking forward to having a piece of meatloaf. Never mind the burnt stuff that's on the foil. It's not in the meatloaf. All right, so there we go. Project Meatloaf. Okay, <clears throat> that is really, really, really good, i got to say. I haven't tried the chicken yet, but I'm sure that is. So it's got uh, just a little bit of fire to it uh, from the um, uh, Anaheim pepper that I put in there. And then um, the uh, Tabasco kind of warmed up the glaze sauce a bit too. But it is really good, i got to say. All right. See you on the next video.